The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Friday morning, everybody. I'm Tammy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Quite the sell-off yesterday. We've gotten back almost 50 points in the S&Ps from the lows last night. We got some Bank of Japan action to go over this morning, but you got markets in positive territory, roaring higher after the sell-off yesterday. S&Ps up by seven tenths percent right now. That's 32 percent in the pot. 32 points in the positive trading right near 4600 at 4596 the nasdaq 100 how about it up 1.1 percent you talk about a rebound right you talk about some moves man we just traded up 200 points from the lows last night 15,744. you're positive by 173 in the nasdaq 100 you're positive by 174 in the dow that's up by a half a percent the dow yesterday snapping a winning streak of 13 straight yesterday would have been 14 a uh, little bit of a sell-off russell up by 18 right now at 1984. We jump over to crude, eighty dollars and fifteen pennies for the price of crude. We got some action in gold as we have a little bit of action in currencies. Gold, 1991. You're positive by six dollars right now. We were just near two thousand. Yeah, check out that spike at about 8:30. We got some personal consumption expenditure numbers to go over as well. We got some earnings to digest. Lots of action on a Friday in summer trading. Silver right now basically flat at 2437. You jump to notes and bonds. Slight reversal of the trend yesterday. It's quite a run yesterday. When you're talking about we had lower price, higher yield, you're talking about a 10 year yield right now, 3.99. 3.99 on that 10 year. Uh, yeah, we'll call it 4% almost the yield on the 10 year curve right now. Quite the sell off yesterday, right? You back it up. That's your 10 year, man. Early Thursday, 112.06. Late Thursday, a 110 handle. Not often do you go from a 112 to a 110 handle on the 10 year. We did it yesterday as you got some higher rates coming at you today, pairing some of that action. We jump over to the dollar index. There's some action for you on the dollar index, man. Up to a 102 handle, back to 101.40. We're at 101.72. Excuse me, we got to talk about the dollar yen, man. Check out some volatility on the dollar yen. So Bank of Japan with some adjusted adjustments to their yield curve control. Uh, we'll get into this, but seems like they might be willing to go higher than they were expecting. That's what the market is thinking, and there is some volatility for you from 141 to 138. We're back nearing 141 on the dollar yen right now. That's putting some action into currencies, commodities. We got a great treat, too. We usually talk to our man Teddy Kegstad on Wednesdays. Couldn't make that happen this week, so he's coming on Friday, and what a day to come on, man. So we'll talk some yen at 40 past the hour, folks, coming up at 40 past 9.40 a.m. Eastern Time. We'll talk to our man Teddy Kegstat. Uh, great day for that with some huge action in the yen, as well as, of course, we had our Fed on Wednesday, ECB on Thursday, Bank of Japan on Friday. And, yeah, we got some volatility, man. We got markets clawing back the losses. And let's just check out Fibonacci-wise. You take that high of early yesterday, and that was the high when I was on the air, man. As in, that's not some pre-market high that was not real. Just crossing the 50%. You sell off from 46.34. Folks, you're talking about 80 S&P points. 80. Yeah. What is it? Almost 47. Yeah. Is that right? It is. 80 S&P points. I had to check it myself. And just like that, we've gotten back more than half of that acceleration. Yeah, because we're more than 40 points off the low right now at 45.97. The 618 would bring us to about 46.03 in that market. Boy, we got some strong numbers out there in terms of earnings, in terms of equities with their numbers. And what are we gonna get into first? Let's talk a little bit of PCE, that number out this morning. So you have, this is one of the Fed's preferred inflation gauges, lowest annual rate in nearly two years. So you, you have the personal consumption expenditure, rose 4.1% from a year ago. The market was looking for 4.2. The annual rate was the lowest since September of 2021 and marked a de decrease from the 4.6% print in May, headline PCA infl PCE inflation, including food and energy costs, also increased 0.2% on the month, rose 3% on an annual basis. So the core number's at 4.1. 
headline number is at 3%. The yearly rate was the lowest since March of 2001 and moved down from 3.8% in May. Now, you got some numbers going on there in terms of energy prices, of course, that are hitting that number. This is different than CPI. The way I differentiate the two to keep track of them, okay? Personal consumption expenditure is everything you're personal, personally consuming, even if you are not directly paying for it, versus the consumer price index is the items that you as a consumer are paying out of pocket. The easiest example of where you get a difference in this is that out-of-pocket expenses that we pay for, a huge portion of that is rent. Okay, That's why rent, um, mortgages are a huge component of CPI. The reason why rent is not as big of a component of personal consumption expenditure is because there are a lot of costs, uh, excuse me, there are a lot of items that you consume that you may not be paying for directly. The easiest one to think of is healthcare. Okay, so think about it. A lot of people receive their healthcare from employment, their employment healthcare plan, et cetera. You are not directly paying for that healthcare plan, yet you are consuming that good as a consumer. So healthcare, a much bigger component of personal consumption expenditure because that's something you're consuming. It's an expense, but you're not exactly paying for that price. So anyway, that's the difference that goes into there. We get PCE today, uh, and that is the preferred method, folks, because it doesn't matter whether you're paying for it or I'm paying for it. Somebody's paying for it, right? And if healthcare costs are going through the roof, that employer is going to have to pay for it. They're going to consider that as they're paying you your wages, et cetera. So it all goes into everything. Nonetheless, we get that number this morning, 4.1% on a core number. Headline number coming in at 3% uh, and lowest numbers in a while, to put it lightly, as you march across that uh, inflation threshold. All right, what else we got going on? We got some companies with earnings for sure. We got Procter & Gamble. Let's see. Let's jump around to some of the equities with their numbers. Procter & Gamble with strong numbers. They're trying higher from about 152 to 154 this morning. Ford with their numbers last night after the bell. Uh, electric vehicles getting pushed back a little bit. They spike higher. You're slightly lower on their numbers this morning. How about Intel, right? Intel after the bell last night, putting a bid in everything. You're up by about $2.30. Now, what's interesting here is you had about a buck seventy-five priced in to their numbers. So, yeah, this thing has moved more than $2.00. But you had almost a $2 move priced in. So they get the move to the upside. Strong numbers from Intel. You jump over to the other chip makers, AMD, trading a bit higher as well. You jump over to NVIDIA shares. NVIDIA gets us, catches a slight bid as well. They're up about $6 for the opening bell. So how about McDonald's on Thursday? I was reading this one, right? Uh, yesterday morning, and so McDonald's, comes out with their numbers, strong numbers. They've oscillated a bit. They trade higher, a little bit of a sell-off with the market, but they finished yesterday in positive territory. And how about McDonald's, man? We'll just tease this one. going to be interesting to see how this plays out. Uh, they're coming with a spinoff, and the spinoff is going to be the Cosmics. Yeah, and they've chosen this character to spin it off. Uh, they're going to unveil a limited restaurant concept few details out there. You got to wait till December on their investor day to check that out. Uh, something I was not aware of. They were like a huge investor in Chipotle. We'll talk about that a little bit when we get back. Invested when Chipotle only had about 16 stores in Colorado. Um, divested when they had 500. We'll talk about that. We'll talk a little McDonald's. We got a lot to talk about, folks. Stay tuned. Be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. I got a chart of Chipotle Mexican Grill up here. And yeah, it's been quite a run for this equity. You go back, they go public in the beginning of 2006. So interesting. McDonald's had 90% of Chipotle, man, 90% of Chipotle. They also had a huge position in Boston market at that time. I was reading about this last night. And so I graduated college in 2002. I uh, was in the market, but you can see a few years after that, I was working at the radio station we had. The Tiger 1590 up in beautiful Nashville, New Hampshire. Uh, stocks and jocks, we did stocks throughout the day. Jocks at night, we had the Boston Red Sox, the Boston Celtics in that Nashua market. Man, Nashua is such a beautiful city, that downtown Nashua. Uh, very fortunate to be working there for a couple of years. A lot of beautiful people. I man, Bud Rolfs, right? Anchored in beautiful Nashua, New Hampshire uh, at that time. Just an awesome place. So I really wasn't in involved in the market as much. So I wasn't living it at that time. So I wasn't aware of all this going on. I was talking to my dad about it. And he was because it was a big part, probably of McDonald's and the story going on back then when they divested. Now, pretty cool that you have that McDonald's invests in Chipotle in like 1995 or something like that. Pre at a time, maybe it was earlier than that. Maybe somebody has it in the, in the den. I had it up there. Uh, they invested in Chipotle, though, when they had 16 stores all in Colorado. OK, that's what they invested in them. By the time they divested, they had 500 stores and McDonald's had about 90 percent ownership in Chipotle. So what's interesting is, OK, let me get this one. Here we go. Uh, so just looking around at different articles to find some of this because they did talk about some of these differences of opinions I've been hearing, just as in you have McDonald's, you got Chipotle, and then you got the spinoff going on. So this conversation is back with McDonald's talking about more restaurants, right? One of the reasons, McDonald's wanted more drive throughs Okay, now interesting that that's where the world was going. McDonald's knew it. They also had a bunch going on in terms of, uh, let's see. So 1998, that's when they made that investment. There it is. Uh, 14 locations to 500 within seven years, quite the expansion. McDonald's had a 90% stake in Chipotle's business by 2005. They pushed that out in 2006. There's your going public at about 35 bucks. You're still trading at 1900, quite the return, right? From 35 bucks, you trade back to $36 at the end of 2018. You pull back to 200 and change at the lows of 2017. And from there we take off. Now you go to McDonald's, we cherry pick the years 2006 in here, 
And McDonald's is trading about $35 or so, right? You kick off 2006 at about $35. Interesting here, okay? One interesting thing to take a look at is where is Chipotle back then? They're at about 39 bucks. It's so interesting. I'm sure McDonald's had a lot more shares outstanding. Okay, but both those equities split adjusted. I'm sure maybe they split over those years, especially McDonald's. Uh, split adjusted, trading at actually the same price in 2006. And what happens? McDonald's makes a run to about 300. Meanwhile, Chipotle makes a run to 2000, okay? Now you could say, what was McDonald's doing, right? Why would they ever have divested in there? Well, they talked about they were struggling, okay? McDonald's was struggling at the time. And here's the last wrap up for this, because context is everything, okay? Because you say, man, what a mistake McDonald's made, right? And yeah, what a mistake McDonald's made in a vacuum, okay? Number one, who's to say that the McDonald's brand is able to manage the Chipotle brand as well as they managed it to grow from $40 to 2000 over that period of time, right? But look at the run McDonald's had even compared to the S&P, okay? So 2006, McDonald's is trading, and I got no McDonald's shares, man. Okay, this is not like a, a bull case, but you put it in perspective, all right, and there is value to what they did because they got rid of everything else, they refocused the ship, and you had their equities trade from the beginning of 2006 at about 35 bucks. You chopped around here. We'll zoom in on 2006, okay? You see, between the first half of the year, man, you were between 34 and 36 bucks, okay? And that is when they spun off Chipotle. Now, you've risen to 300. So what is that? An eight bagger almost over that time? Well, they've almost they've almost doubled the performance of the S and P, folks. You take the S and P, you're at 1,200. OK, you're not even up four times that time. Meanwhile, McDonald's up eight times over that time. Chipotle is up, what, 100 times over that time? No, 50 times, something like that. It's important to take it in context, though, because you've had McDonald's since 2006 when they spun it off, basically double the returns of the S&P. Maybe it's just fast food's a good place to be in no matter where you are on that spectrum in terms of fast food like McDonald's or fast food like Chipotle. And Chipotle is fast food, man. Uh, McDonald's saw the writing, though. They said drive throughs They saw drive throughs everywhere, man. And even in 2006, right, they wanted businesses with drive throughs Well, guess what? It took it took uh, 14 years until COVID that we discovered everything needs drive throughs uh, These days, you ever, you ever search for a Starbucks, folks? I'm a coffee fanatic. Uh, just in the morning, trying to shave off those afternoon coffees. They, they don't sit too well, um, just with the caffeine and everything. But you ever look for a Starbucks and they don't have a drive through basically doesn't even exist anymore. And if it does, you say, what the heck is going on? Why would I walk into it? I just want to drive by and grab my coffee. Pretty remarkable they had all these Starbucks with, without drive throughs right? Nowadays, it's like, man, Chipotle, of course, they're building drive throughs that are only accessible through their online app, et cetera. I just thought it was interesting to go over that kind of um, historical perspective of owning that share in Chipotle, kind of having a little bit of a battle and the battle was on anyway. They talked about it in terms of, you know, Chipotle has such a different business model versus McDonald's, right? Chipotle, Fresh Mexican Grill, they wanted them to change the name of that. Um, so there were some battles in terms of the culture there going on. But nonetheless, they spun it off. And yeah, hindsight could be 2020. But who's to say, folks, that 17 years go by and the, the McDonald's execs are able to handle that in the same way? And maybe that what distraction by selling off that distraction, they beat the market, doubled the returns over the next 17 years in the S&P. So that's the other side of that conversation. But man, Cosmics, I don't know if we're gonna see Cosmics play out. I think they're playing into the futuristic AI trend of trying to push that out. They did talk about McDonald's, that their grimace really crushed things. And so they're, they're, going, in the, uh, they're going in the hole and trying to find all those uh, different characters that they might be trying to pull out. And I guess they found one, Cosmics from the 80s and 90s. All right, what else do we got going on? Let's see. Boy, this one's an interesting one. Whoa, whoa, all right, we're gonna, well, let's talk a little Procter & Gamble first, okay? Pricing power endures. Consumers still pay more for premium brands, including Tide propping up sales as volumes slip. That's not indicative of a strong economy. What, what happens when they can't keep raising rates, right? Sales volume fell 1% overall. That's the kicker here. Raised the prices by 7% across its brands in the June quarter from a year earlier. Yeah, that followed two straight quarters in which the maker raised their prices by 10% year over year. So they're dropping it a bit. 
but as you can see, volume's falling. They're making more money. They're doing it by raising prices. Um, consumers who have less cash available are buying more frequently, and they're buying smaller pack sizes, mainly at dollar channels. Organic sales, a metric that excludes deals and currency moves, rose 8% for the last quarter and 7% for the fiscal year. Organic sales growth of 4 to 5% for the current year. Overall revenue increased 5%. They raised their prices 7% and their revenue increased 5%, right? Yeah, slightly above expectations, but nonetheless, uh, indicative of the exact economy that we are dealing with right now. You jump back to Procter & Gamble prices, holding up relatively well. We give back some of those gains. You're up by $1.50 right now, coming into the opening bell. S&P's up by 30, folks. It's gonna be an interesting open. We're digesting a lot of earnings. We're going to be talking Bank of Japan coming up at 40 past with our man Teddy Kegstat. We'll be talking some other equities, and we're going to be talking $2 billion uh, when we come back. Stay tuned. Attention traders. Larry Pesavento, the renowned trading mastermind, is holding an exclusive live trading event on Wednesday, August 2nd. From 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern Time, transform your trading skills with the real-time wisdom of a Wall Street veteran. Just $295 gets you a front row seat to this power packed session, plus a month free of Larry's sought after newsletter, Fibonacci 24 seven, a $97 value. Elevate your strategies, decode the markets and achieve your financial goals. Remember, this event will be archived for all attendees and Larry only does a few of these a year. Don't miss this opportunity. Sign up today at TFNN.com. Secure your future and start trading smarter. TFNN, educating investors. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up, <clears throat> excuse me, 32 points. That's 7 tenths percent in the positive. NASDAQ 100, you're trading up by a full percent right now. Dow up by half a percent. You got the Russell up by 18. Last part of the conversation for that McDonald's, I just find it so interesting, right, in terms of a business perspective. So that article that I was cherry picking there just kind of pulled up from Business Insider. That is written in May of 2015. Okay, so we're doing hindsight by eight years. And this article is pretty 
bearish McDonald's, right? Giving them the business. Now it's Business Insider. You, you're, you're going for some clickbait there. Uh, but what it talks about is, and here's the sentence, now, right, it goes, they divested in 2005. A year later, McDonald's divested everything. Chipotle has more than 1,800 locations now. This is as of 2015 when they're writing this article. While McDonald's is battling declining sales and traffic, a damaged public perception, and a relationship with franchisees that is hidden all time low at mcdonald's annual shareholder meeting this week an attendee grilled the ceo and why the company gave up on chipotle according to entrepreneur magazine now and this is where the ceo breaks down why they did it they had boston market they had taken away attention from the core brand etc we talked about some of this okay what's so interesting here is this article was written in may of 2015 and they're giving mcdonald's the businessman okay and you can see why here is may of 2015 You've been stuck for almost four years at about $100 on McDonald's prices at that time. But boy, that was right before the breakout. Look at that run, man. Now, McDonald's has tripled in price since then. Now, interesting. You go to Chipotle, though, okay? And this is where expectations can be everything, folks, okay? It's just a great example, okay? Chipotle was at peak optimism there. That article is written when Chipotle is trained at 700 okay, about well, McDonald's has overperformed Chipotle Mexican Grill since that time. Pretty interesting, right? Chipotle is from 700 to about 1900. Meanwhile, you got McDonald's tripling in price from about a 100 to 300 price tag. And the kicker is here, right? Look at the difference that you had from the run up. As in, that's why McDonald's was struggling, man. And this is where, you know, Kevin has a great statement. Kevin Hanks that we talked to says, you know, at I can be a buyer of anything at a certain price. I can be a seller of anything at a certain price because everything can be overbought and oversold. And I'm paraphrasing, paraphrasing what he says, but it's 100 million percent true to its core, folks. Uh, and you see it on this graph especially, right? Optimism for Chipotle at all time high. What does it do? Well, you pull back from 750 bucks to 250 over the next couple of years. Meanwhile, McDonald's during that time, they were at an all time low. The article said it, right? 2015, you're coming in all time low. There was no pullback, man. This thing was raised from 100 and it never looks back and we're pushing the upper boundaries. The one thing interesting about McDonald's, man, we are bumping up against that upper boundary line in this channel line that I have on my chart basically from when that article is written. How cool is that, right? Pretty interesting. Okay, let's keep jumping around to what else we have going on. Exxon Mobil, profit misses estimates as natural gas and refining slip. We jump over to Exxon Mobil. We'll go back to the short term chart. Pulling back a bit, we're off about 1.7% for ExxonMobil on their numbers. We were at almost 107 yesterday. We're trading at 103.65 today. What else we got going on? We talked about the PCE. We've talked about McDonald's. We're going to talk Bank of Japan coming up with our man Teddy Kegstat in about 10 minutes at 40 past. No, quicker than that, man. Yeah. Oh, here we go. The $2 billion default. So check this one out, man. I don't have enough time to talk about it, but boy, this is an interesting read. I will post this in the den. It's a Wall Street Journal article. The $2 billion default followed warnings to everybody but investors. Surprise, surprise, folks. Investors. Uh, the last ones to get any inkling that anything may, may be wrong when you got a $2 billion default looming on basically a Ponzi scheme for all essential purposes. Uh, and this has to do with a company beneficial beneficent yeah and it's it's it brands beneficial and beneficent um and this goes to man it's pretty remarkable so brad hepner okay he brings together a couple different companies he's bringing small investors in and as I even go to go over this, folks, there's too much cool stuff in this article. And I say cool as in, boy, it is remarkable. It is amazing. It is interesting. Use the words you want. Uh, how this stuff can be happening in plain sight with a board of directors, people quitting everywhere. And meanwhile, investors have no idea what is going on behind the curtains. Okay. For all appearances, Hepner and his team had a promising strategy. Beneficent would use money from one company, GWG Holdings, okay, an established financial services firm that sold bonds to retail investors. So they would sell bonds to retail investors. 
It would then use that money to acquire stakes in private equity funds and other high-flying assets, giving rank-and-file investors access to markets typically off-limits to them. The first funds had about $50 million. Not that long ago, man, June of 2019. As far as the, as far as the board was consider, concerned, they were going to use that money to expand the business, the former director said. But guess what? It kicked off what became one of the biggest financial blowups to strike retail investors in years. Now, what's remarkable here is within weeks, not months, within weeks, the chief financial officer discovered millions of dollars of payments for Hepner's nearly 1,500-acre East Texas ranch, his personal travel via private jet. You had another gentleman, Keis, okay? I'm trying to get all these names without going too quickly. Nonetheless, you had many people involved. You had board members involved, okay? This guy was formerly an audit partner at KPMG. He was the CFO of Chuck E. Cheese. Good old Chuck E. Cheese, man. Um, and also found the company that had been using a faulty, yeah, he also found the company was using faulty accounting method that would misstate revenue. Kaus, Kais learned that beneficence inner workings didn't, in her view, square, okay, this is a woman, for, excuse me, square with the best interest of investors, according to people who worked with her at the time. Basically, he was using all this money, all right? I'm going to get to one chart in here, and I'll post this in the den. Check it out, though, okay? The money trail goes from GWG Holdings, which is where retail investors are, okay, they invest money into Beneficent, and then what do they do? They crush that money back out to Hepner's related financial trusts, his private jet firm, his ranch out there. And the reason why it really matters, folks, why I'm bringing it up most especially, is because this firm had $2 billion, and by the time they went BK, I think it was $1.3 billion, and people ended up losing here. All right, I'll have to find it. There's almost just too much in here to bring up as I was, yeah, here we go. The bankruptcy court formed two trusts to try and return some of the $1.3 billion owed to GWG bond investors. Um, yeah, so just be careful with your money. Be careful who you give it to, man, um, because here we see the instant that within weeks, okay, and here's the gentleman right here, Brad Hepner on the left there, uh, just swindling a billion dollars, but trying to do it legally, and unfortunately, investors paying the toll there to the tune of over a billion dollars. So it's just, it's just crazy that it can happen in plain sight, but nonetheless. All right, we jump to housing. Starter homes. Shouldn't be surprising, folks, but even harder to afford. But boy, you look at the real time numbers, man. 64500 bucks. That's what you have to make to afford an average entry level house, according to a new report. And that entry level house is $243,000 with a mortgage rate near 7%. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back. We're talking currencies. We're talking commodities. We'll talk some dollar yen with our man, Teddy Kegstad. Don't go away. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe 
to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got markets in positive territory right now. We got some action and a great day to have our man Teddy Kegstad on from the Tiger Forex report. We got some action in the dollar yen. And, folks, we talk to Teddy usually every Wednesday. It's a treat. We got him on Friday at 40 past the hour. He puts out the Tiger Forex report every Monday with a weekly issue, updates throughout the week when warranted. You can check it out under the newsletter tab on the front page of TFNN. You head on over there, you click on the Tiger Forex report, you can sign up. It's $97 a month, folks. That comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers. And, boy, let's get into it. We got some action this morning. Teddy Kegstack, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Boy, uh, I woke up. I saw the news on Bank of Japan. I said, I love it, man. We got Teddy on today to talk about this. We've been talking about the Bank of Japan. So I really haven't talked about it too in-depth yet, Teddy. But maybe if you could give us a quick summation um, as I pull this headline up, what the Bank of Japan did today and how that's impacting the markets and a pretty uh, dramatic shift, it seems, from the headlines I'm reading. Well, the first the first thing is that the Bank of Japan doesn't act very often. So, <laughs> so the fact that there's news of any kind, that's where you get a shake up to begin with, you know. So okay. I think it's a nice it's a definitely nice tone, you know, showing that the direction that they've already started, you know, a while back ago is that, you know, remember that uh, prior to this new dynasty, if you will, that's forming for the Bank of Japan, you know, they hadn't done anything or really released any news for really a very, very long time. It was basically, they were just, they just existed, you know, and since the spring, since we've had this new turnover in leadership, you know, we've had actual action, we've act had an actual voice, you know, and a tone that, you know, is actually something where they're doing something, you know, so I think that's the biggest carry their biggest takeaway you need to look at from the bank of japan is that they're actively doing things now now is it aggressive no not by any means you know the fact that they're actually doing things that means something in itself okay so and i i, I think that's the kind of perspective you have to take like I, I would equate to what's going on with the Bank of Japan right now with the tortoise and the hare. Okay, now we all know that the story, the hare, the tortoise wins the race. Well, the BOJ is definitely the tortoise, and like our Fed, if if you would, will be the whether it be the hare. You know, so I think that when it comes to the currency valuations and things like that, I wouldn't get to put too much weight fundamentally on what they're doing because of the fact that it's on such a lag, if you will. Nice. And I was reading your Tiger Forex report, and I know you always cover the dollar yen among with many other pairings, of course. And in there last week, I think, or this Monday, I should say, um, you were talking about, you know, this area that we had in there back on. And I got a daily chart of the dollar yen, Teddy, and I'm just looking at that recent low, right, July 14th, somewhere above 137. Mm -hmm. um, and you were saying, you know, beside breaking that, right, I wouldn't look for a change of trend. And you talked about how it would have to be pretty dramatic shift in terms of the hawkishness 
that that would take. Mm-hmm. Is that something that you maybe saw here? Or because we got quite a pop, we almost made it to 138, man, this morning, and we're just like that, we're back to 140.51. Um, so is mm-hmm. this not really a change of trend that you're looking at right now on this type of action, or you're we're waiting to, correct for it to play? Correct. Now, okay. if if the BOJ would become very aggressive, you know, in their hawkish stance, then I would say that that downside breakout area where that swing low was from a couple weeks ago would be in jeopardy. Then I could see us getting back down to the 135, 132 area even, you know, which would be a big sell off for the U.S. dollar yen. But right now, the Fed isn't really laying off the gas pedal. You know what I mean? Like they, they've they've decreased what they're doing, but there's still there's there's every reason to think that the Fed could jump on interest rates still going forward through the rest of this year if numbers started to fall apart. We have a big unemployment number coming out next week. Like people didn't realize that besides the central bank action over the past few days between the, our Fed and the Bank of Japan, you know, y- y- these rate decisions are one thing, but we had an unemployment claims number that came out yesterday that's not going in the right direction for what the Fed wants, you know? So, and, and I think that if the unemployment number comes out very strong, meaning lower unemployment, you know, that's gonna be a, every reason in the world to think that the Fed is gonna remain hawkish and they're gonna be at a much aggressive, more aggressive level than the, than the BOJ is. And that's why I give you this analogy of the tortoise and the hare. So it's it's very good to have this transparency and see what kind of direction that the yen is going in. And I think that what it does do is take out that that valuation of seeing the yen, U.S. dollar yen really rally to an extreme. You know what I mean? If the BOJ didn't do anything over the past, you know, day or so or even the last or even coming up in the next couple of weeks, it would really be hard to see the U.S. dollar dollar yen not try and push back towards those highs that we made a couple uh, months ago. We still have a good chance of getting to those highs, but we're probably going to establish a range. I don't think we're going to spike through them. And if we do, you're going to see a very bit quick head fake, if that makes any sense. You know what I'm sure. saying? Like, yeah. So the, that, that fundamental factor, the differential between our interest rate moves and our hawkishness versus their hawkishness, we're still the stronger ones there. But the fact that they are playing now means that w- it is a big deal. It means that we're, we're not going to be able to accelerate in strength you know, in that trend because because remember, when the dollar was weak versus many other currencies, it was still strong versus the yen and has been over the past couple of years, let alone the past few months. You know, And I think that's something that you have to really take a look at is that now we may not be as strong against the yen as we have been. You know what I'm saying? The trend is still bullish. I'd be very cautious trying to be a big seller on this one. You know, The only thing I would say is if the Fed all of a sudden said, yeah, we're not going to raise rates for the next like – four or five months, you know, or even just the next couple of meetings, whatever, then you might see us hit those lows pretty hard. But otherwise, I think we might be actually establishing a wide range trade. Yeah, pretty interesting, man. Uh, The volatility and we're back above 140. And boy, yeah, when I do take that chart back to even, you know, beginning of 2021, I got almost 100 on my chart. um, So still sitting at about 140. Pretty remarkable. what do you want to jump to next? Can we talk some some euro maybe? I mean, pretty interesting week, right? We get the Fed, sure. we get the ECB um, to follow. We got the euro at about 110 right now, a little bit of downward action um, yesterday. What did you think of the action of the euro yesterday? <laughs> well, you know, all the I have to say all the currencies had some phenomenal volatility the last Ooh. couple of days. And a lot of it has, you know, I heard you talking about the 10-year earlier this morning. And the, the interest rates have a lot to do with that. You've had a lot of movement in, you know, the long and short-term interest rates, which definitely will cause the currencies to move like that. You know, yeah. so what, as that volatility increases to that, when they start to hit those extremes, like you mentioned, a two-point move in the 10-year, that's an extreme move, you know, that's especially not off of anything that would really – cause that shake up you know what i'm saying yeah. and it's all right. Right, right i mean and you're also yeah. pushing those higher yields you know yeah. and that that's where you you get this this you know fundamental tr- aspect of the trade starts to come in you know like we've been trading very technically for the past couple of weeks and the fundamentals you know i, I remember a year ago saying how like the, the economic numbers are very very big you know and, and and you have to watch like when they like the euro especially when the german numbers come out and the eu numbers they haven't been very good you know, and and they're not track they're not tracking in a in a good direction. And the thing is, they don't have the bullets like we do. And I, I think that we're going to start to really see that inflection. So when it comes to like the euro, you know, um, it's 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 stuck. It's I, I can't see it getting very strong versus the dollar, no matter what they do. You know, no matter how hawkish sure. they get. You know, just because of the yeah. fundamentals. You know, 
So yeah. it's tough to compete with the numbers that we're putting out, man. Whether it's the GDP numbers, some of the earnings right. numbers, pretty strong earnings season, man. These companies, they keep crushing it, um, right. to say the least. Teddy, I appreciate you coming on, man, on quite a day. We look forward to talking to you next Wednesday. Have a great weekend. And uh, folks, Sounds check good. out the Tiger Forex Report. Teddy, I appreciate it, man. We'll talk to you next Wednesday, okay? Take care. Have a nice weekend, Tommy. Have a great weekend. Folks, check out Tiger Forex Report. You heard it. Currency, man. They're moving. We got one more segment. We'll be right back to finish up the show launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets in positive territory. S&Ps right now up by 38 points. Great segment with Teddy, man. Dollar yen. Um, he puts out some great information, folks. I know not everybody trades Forex, but boy, Forex and yields, which Teddy covers in his newsletter, just controlling so much of this market right now. Check out the Tiger Forex report. You get a free for a month. You get some of his archive webinars. If you don't use it, folks, okay, if it's not just up your alley, maybe you're not trading options enough, you cancel it, pay nothing. I guarantee you'll get some good information over that month. You can't go wrong. Now, getting back to that housing article, right? Some of the numbers are just crazy, man. Starter homes disappear from the U.S. housing market. Active listings, 394,000. Now, this number is properties within the fifth, fifth, to 35th percentile by sales price. That is how they're categorizing a starter home. When you coincide the rise in values with then the rise in mortgage rates, 
making the payments escalate at an even accelerated rate on top of the rise in the underlying just base price for base price for the home. Excuse me. Especially true in Florida. First time buyers seeking sunshine and low taxes. Financial bar has jumped more than 20 percent compared to last year. Fort Lauderdale, 28 percent. Miami, 25 percent. I'm sure Tampa's right up there, man, uh, because you got dramatically rising prices and then you throw in mortgage rates on top of it. New active listings are down 23 percent year over year. Thanks in part to existing homeowners opting not to sell when sitting on record low mortgage rates. That's not going to change for a while, man. You don't need to, folks, okay? You know, I encourage you, if you're a landowner, to, to keep your land if possible, okay? And it's not a joke, man. Land is not getting, they're not making more land. That's it. All the land's been made, uh, at least on this planet, it's been made. So if you can hold that, don't sell it, all right? Rent it out if you need to. Um, make it an Airbnb if you need to. Because, yeah, you can't get those mortgage rates back, and there's no need to. You can always take out the equity if you need to, right? If mortgage rates come back down, you don't need to sell. Own that property if you want to, um, if you can. Stay in that property, especially if you're in an area that's rising, like Florida. Wind at your back, pun intended. Folks, thanks so much for starting your Friday off with me. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman. He's in the Tiger's Den. He's getting ready. He's coming up next live. Stay tuned for the Tiger Technician Tower, folks. Have a great weekend. See you on Monday.